Hi folks! For my Star Wars vs. Star Trek ion propulsion video, I went overboard and added actual lasers to the models. So I thought I'd show you the process of taking apart one of these cheap lasers, cutting it back to minimum size, and installing some in my models. The lasers I used are these very cheap ones, which I bought at a dollar store. They're a simple cylinder with a switch on the side. To disassemble it, I unscrew the front piece, and then the back with the keychain. Inside are three batteries, which I'll need later. Looking inside, you can see that much of it is now an empty cylinder. To fit it in my models, I need to make it as small as possible. So I figure out how much of the cylinder is safe to cut away for starters, and cut it off. The laser is in here. Through the circuit board, it's connected to this resistor, and then to one side of this switch. The other side of the switch is connected to this spring, which goes to the negative of the batteries. The return path from the battery positive was through the cylinder wall itself and back to the laser somewhere in here. I won't be needing the spring or the switch. So looking through the magnifying glass, I bend back the legs of the switch. The legs are soldered to the board on this side, but I can tilt the legs out on this side. Then it's off to my soldering station. I first desolder the spring and then the switch. Next I solder a red wire to this metal surface here. I've learned the hard way that this has to be done with a minimum of heat. Otherwise it all comes apart, as it did with this one the second time I did this. Then I soldered a black wire to just after the resistor, where it made electrical contact with the switch. A quick test shows that it still works. But I can make it smaller. I cut back more of the cylinder, until I have this. This part of the circuit board isn't needed anymore. So I cut that off too. And now it's as small as I can make it. There's actually a lens in front here, which can be removed. You might think that that's not a part of the laser, so I can get rid of that too. But due to diffraction, the light from these cheap diode lasers spreads out around 10 degrees this way and 30 degrees this way. The lens compensates for that by bending the light back. The other thing the lens does is reflect some light back through the laser's housing. So if you ever do this, be careful not to look inside here, since you don't want the laser light shining in your eyes. Time to install the lasers in my models. First, this TIE fighter from Star Wars, which came in this packaging, the Snap Tight by Revell. I start by melting away some of the plastic on the bottom, since some of the circuit board will stick out. The only place I can fit the laser is where Darth Vader normally sits. I hot glue it into place. I find that if I offset the batteries a bit, I can fit them above the laser, just barely. So I hot glue them together like that. But that would electrically short the batteries with the cylinder, so I add a little tape for installation. Then I tape the wires to the batteries, starting with the negative going to the circuit board. Then I tape on a separate red wire for the positive. The other red wire goes to the laser, leaving me with two ends of red wires. Connecting them together acts like a switch, closing the circuit and turning on the laser. Next, I assemble it all. And here's the finished result. I melted a small hole in the front window for enough of the light to shine through. And when I connect the red wires together, the laser fires. But wait, there's no enemy to fire it at. That's where the Star Trek Enterprise comes in. This one is an AMT Snap-It model of the NCC-1701E from the movie's first contact, Insurrection and Nemesis. I start once again by melting holes to make things fit. Luckily these holes are on the inside where parts come together and won't be visible after. Next I hot glue the laser in place on the underside of the saucer's top plate. I'll have the light come out the edge here. I then attach the saucer's bottom plate to the rest of the body. And lastly, I put the top plate with the laser and batteries in place. A quick test shows it works. And of course... I have them now. We're going to collide! Deflector shields up! He's insane! It's gone. It doesn't appear on any of our tracking scopes. I'm afraid the captain's not going to like this. Han Solo has taught me well. Just a word of warning. Working with lasers like this is dangerous. Be sure to not get the laser light in your eyes. Keeping in mind that there's a lot of reflection and redirection going on here. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes a Star Wars vs. Star Trek one I mentioned, where I add ion propulsion to both these models and have them fight it out for real. Well, sort of. One on how to make your own laser from scratch, called a T-Laser. And for variety, one on how to make high voltage capacitors. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up, or leave a question, or comment below. See you soon!